I want to start with some body mechanics stuff. Sharon has already had a head start in this because we worked on it when we were down in Phoenix. So she's totally mastered it. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, ask Sharon. Josh, no bulking. So what I want you to do is stand in Sagon, and I would like your partner to be safe, cup one hand over the tip, and then grab the tip with the other hand and give it a good grip. Because what I'm going to do is see if I got the proper, have the proper structure here. So first thing is just passive. Well, I mean, to the extent that anything's passive. Get down into your legs. This should be springy. Nice posture. And then put your extension out. And what I would like your partner to do is push and pull. A little harder. OK? Just start with that. This is your ground path. Then we're going to practice how to release that without disconnecting things, like the arm moving separately from your center. Everything, whole body movement, which is what Kuroto Sensei would say. Okay, So right now, just start with, am I solid, without worrying about the movement. He'll push, he'll pull. I should really be relaxed here. These muscles should be relatively soft. I mean, they're extending, no question. but. Within this, like if he's pushing and pulling, I should be able to move fluidly inside that without being unstable. Okay? If you're tightening up to resist what they're doing, it's not right yet. Okay? I'm picking on each year only because he's somewhat representative. guy, hey? So, why is this happening? Bueller, anyone? Arrow. So, if you disconnect this and then the arms start out, okay, even a little bit, right about here, then the draw here is running this spiral and a wave that goes this way and it'll take you right up off your base. Okay, so where does that left hand extend? Where is that left hand supposed to extend? Uh, where? You drop a plumb line straight down your center. It should come out between your feet and from that spot out about 40 inches and that's where this extends to. This hand is extending down to the floor. And even when he does a ski, the range is no greater than this. So that it's never not extending to the floor. The moment it starts to extend out, the sword disconnects from your center. Okay, so before you push and pull on your partner, come over here, put your hand under their left hand and try and lift straight up. Okay. Now, do your shoulders go up and down while you're doing this? Yeah. So that's good. So if you keep that extension into the floor, well, you're letting it go, though. Keep it. This is extending out from your heart, but that's extending down. And make your elbows heavy. Ah. Things just got a lot more solid. They're still spongy, though. Okay. Now drop into your legs. Because you see that, that wobble I'm getting up there? <laughs> Much better. Can you see how, though, he has to energize against what I'm doing? There's a little moment in there. If I did this just a little faster, he'd be gone before he can energize against it, because he's not already energized. Whereas, <clears throat> this, 
a little bit of flex in here. I'm not rigid. But when he pulls, it goes out and hits my front extension. When he pushes, it goes into my back leg. Okay? And there's no wobble up here. Whatever shock absorption is happening is happening in here where the elbows are. If I white knuckle this and make my arms rigid, that push will go right into my center. He'll hit it and I'll get pushed back. Okay, so this is just like an empty hand. If Josh came over and grabbed me and he starts pushing, it's the elbow and the flex of the elbow. So no matter how hard he pushes, this is soft. And that takes it right into the floor. The moment I make this tight, goes up, hits my shoulders, takes me off my base. So with sword, Gleason Sensei was talking about, with sword, the handle is the elbow. So when it's empty hand, your fingers are the tip, obviously, and the elbow is crucial to everything. Right? We use elbow power in what we do. Right? With sword, this is the elbow. It has to be down and grounded. So the key extension is from your hara out there, out in the distance. But your physical extension from your arms, which is also your elbows, goes into the floor, so you have a ground path. If they both go that way, you're unstable. Okay? So see if you can get this relaxing. Okay? Also, as much as you can, your, your hands are coming together, so your shoulders do round a little on sword. But see if you can open up that heart chakra. So. See, this, when you do this, when these shoulder blades slide together and your shoulders drop down here, you open that chest up, you get even more solid. Pull. Okay? Patience. You have to create a line. This elbow should feel heavy. You'd have a nice vertical here, okay? This, you have to create a line of intent from this hand down to the floor to about there, okay? Then you create another line of intent from your hara out your tip, okay? You actually need to have another mental line of intent from your center back, like back there someplace. And that's actually probably for most people the hardest one to do because we're so visual it's not hard to get focused to go where your eyes are going. It's much more difficult to get your back energized. And the systemic guys do a whole lot of things to try and get you to energize evenly in your back. Okay? But if she's got that line down and this line out, and then balances it with that line that goes back. Now, you see how you're getting a little? Because mm -hmm. okay, that's because your legs are tight. This part's great. If I pull now and you can't take this energy into the ground, you're hosed because I can overpower you. Now, keep that extension really. Bend your knees. Bend, 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 bend. Lower. Shift your weight forward a little. Lower. You see how our upper body just got a lot more stable? So if you're getting unstable, first thing to check is how you're carrying tension in your legs. Okay? This whole thing with the legs, most people stand on the floor, okay? So gravity's trying to pull you down, and the efficient way to not go down is to run energy out your legs against that, and actually extend enough that you can get your bone structure involved. So if I can get my bone structure involved, my, my muscles can relax, and you can actually stand this way for a really long period of time. The problem with this is, when you're standing on the floor, if they push you, you tip over because you're essentially balancing. That is not the source of our power in what we do. So the source of our power, we have to go into the floor. So instead of thinking of your legs extending energy to counter gravity, think of your legs as like truck springs or railroad car springs. They're actually flexible and you hang off the ceiling, okay? This is a nice internal power visualization. Feel like you're hanging off the ceiling by your head and let your entire structure sink onto these springs. If you're on these springs, when he goes to push, 
it goes into the ground. Now watch, he's pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. The moment I tighten something in my legs, I can't get the ground path anymore. So if you're having trouble being stable, and this is true in your empty hand and everything else, right? you might be okay in your upper body, but he's pulling me or pushing me and I'm going up like, that's totally legs. Push, pull. And why is this important? Because this is your platform. Everything you do, whether it's empty hand or weapons work, it doesn't matter. All that stuff is out there. If you don't have this, you're hosed. You don't have a platform for any of the techniques that you know how to do. Okay? So somebody who's stronger than you are comes in hard, they just take you right off your base and then you can't do anything. Okay? So this is really crucial and it gets neglected a lot. Okay? In fact, when I started Aikido, we just hopped on the mat and started training. This was never gone into in any great detail. Sensei would have us occasionally stand here and he would push and pull and make sure that we were stable. But there's actually no explanation that went with that about how to be stable. He would go, no, no, no. Then he would demonstrate. He, of course, could do it beautifully. Then you would do it again and he would go, no, no, no. And finally, when he got tired of uh, you know, s focusing on that, we'd move to something else. He didn't have all this detail about, <laughs> I got the thing about the 40 inches out from the Hara from Dick Anderson's kendo teacher. He was the one who made me aware of that. Right? Picked up other things other places. Gleason Sensei was talking about the sword handle being the equivalent to the elbow. Okay, all of these details you put together and all of a sudden you have some idea how to actually go about organizing your structure for this. Okay? So before we do anything else, we got to set the platform. Then we figure out how to move the platform and then we can talk about what to do with that platform. Okay? So that's the progression. So a little more on this. If you're having any trouble, raise your hand. Okay? Switch partners too yourself bigger or more muscular than you are I mean within a certain range you can go to the gym and pump iron but there's just a limit to what you're gonna pull out of that okay and most women no matter what they do can't bulk up the same way the guys can so it's a limited way of trying to go about things your spirit there's no limit to how big that can be you know and Mary Heine sensei is the perfect example of that I mean it's like she walks into the room and she fills it She's huge. Her field is monstrous. Okay? So when you're having trouble with this, 99% of the time, it's because your mind's too small. And there's just ways of visualizing that. I mean, it's like some of the rotations that we do. Gleason Sensei got, got a visualization from Dan Harden that was, think about this being the hub of a 12-foot wheel. This monstrous thing. So instead of thinking about this dear tiny thing, you're actually envisioning this being the hub of this huge wheel that you're rolling around. Okay, all sorts of things. So on this, Josh is pushing on my sword. Little mind is putting my attention on his hand and trying to resist that. Big mind is putting my... See what just happened to him? Focus on his hand, focus in the distance. My posture changed, everything changed. Okay, so try it a little more. People are getting a little more solid. They're starting to get into their legs better. Okay, and I mean the distance. Don't think about them. Try and ignore them and be out there as far out in the distance as you can as far into the floor as you can. When I sink here, it's like my feet are set in cement four feet below the surface. And this is way out there, through that wall, through the other wall, out into space. See if you can get that. If you can get that, you're going to feel the change in how your structure works. Okay? Go ahead. Like it's some kind of mysterious, you know, key extension is mysterious. It, it, you know how to do this already. Okay? Everybody take your right hand and point it O sensei. Okay. Phil. Shmas. 
point of Kishimaro Ueshiba. So what just happened? I gave him something out there to think about. So his mind went out to the picture of Kishimaro Ueshiba. And then he physically expressed that with his body. Now, keep your mind out there and point at him. And don't do anything else. This ain't bending. Now, if his legs aren't setting up a ground path, I can still probably push him over, but this is not going to bend. His mind's out there, and if you're having trouble with that, you have a complete failure to visualize. And what's happening is when they touch you, your attention goes to the contact point. You, you're not able to keep it out there. So you can see, it's like people are, they look really good and they're looking on, they got the distance look and everything. And the moment you touch the sword, their attention goes to the sword, their energy field collapses, and now they're having to push against you. His mind is out there. Okay, now bend the knees. Now it's the elbow that has to extend to the floor. Extend out there, just make the elbow feel heavy. It's collapsing, put your mind back out to, ah, you see what happens? As soon as he puts his mind back out there, he expands in that space. You guys are Shihan in pointing. You have all been pointing at things since you were little kids. That's it. That's the whole schmear. Okay, as far as the arms go anyway. Then you gotta get down here so that when you're pointing out there and he starts pushing. Okay, Josh, can you help him push? I have a ground path. As long as something's touching the ground, I don't lose that ground path. If I move from the ground, I can actually go through them. Later, when you start getting some of this, the other structural stuff, you can start doing weird stuff like, I had, I had both feet off the ground for a split second and I didn't lose it. I'm not entirely sure why that works. I can do it, just not entirely sure why it works. I'm not sure why when both feet come up I don't just fly for a minute. But it has to do with the rest of the structure. And even though both feet went up, I still was kind of mentally in the ground, mentally in the sky. That's something to play, play with later, okay? Fortunately, for most of what we do, you don't now have to, have to know how to do that. That 99% of what we're gonna do one foot or the other is going to be on the ground. So you don't have to worry about that. But it's something to try because it's really an interesting feel. Okay? You know how to do this. But you have to do it. And you have to keep your focus. If your focus is wobbly, you're hosed. Okay? If Josh comes up here and I'm... And then I think about that, push. He's going to take it. The moment he does it, it's like... Because I just put all of my energy right where the, the only place in the room he's strong. The only place in the room he's strong, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is where he touches me. That is absolutely the last place I want to have my attention go. Has to be out there. Okay? Back there, up there, out there, around this. Not at it at all. Okay? So, a little more. And then we've got to take this into movement, okay? But I don't want to go to the next step till people have this piece down, and they're, they're still spongy and wobbly. I mean, you know, we've talked about the kind of problems that Aikido has had, okay? Most of the people in this room are black belts. And so the question is, how do you get up to first, second, third, fourth, fifth degree black belt? You can go places where there are people with fourth and fifth degree black belts and they still actually don't have a good platform. So they've been doing Aikido for decades. And the thing that should have been addressed in their first year was never addressed properly. Okay? And this is why the internal power guys are now wandering around you know, having so much cachet because they're showing people how to do this stuff that should have been shown us when we started. Okay? So we gotta fix this before we go on because everything we do is based on this, okay, a little more. <laughs>